We start tonight with a meeting of Celtic and Hearts, a game which always looked like being a tight one, given that the last three meetings of the pair had finished in draws. Celtic looking for a lift after their European disappointment and hoping to avoid dropping further valuable points. They'd slipped up the previous weekend. David Goodwillie putting Dundee United in front. Only for Scott McDonald to salvage a draw for the home side. Hearts travelled west in a high after Andy Driver's stunning winner against Kilmarnock. Captain Stephen McManus dropped out for Celtic. Gary Caldwell returned to central defence. Georgia Samaras also missed out. A new front pairing then of Scott McDonald and Chris Killen. Hearts had Janis Baloch in goal in place of Marian Kello and welcome back Maria Saliukas from suspension. In a major surprise, Gaddy Glenn's place up front was taken by centre-half Ishmael Bouzid, at least for a while. Commentary from Paul Mitchell. Michael Stewart for Hearts. On to Suso. Suso trying to get away from Brown. Nice turn from the Spaniard. Goes for goal and beats out for Bolic. Hearts have the lead inside five minutes at Celtic Park. Suso came across, hit the shot. After Boric gets two hands to it, some shots are unstoppable. That didn't look like one of them. Fox with a corner, Balak under pressure. Caldwell killing, trying to get in there. Hearts took it clear. Oh, Aidan McGinney! Close to the equaliser, Aidan McGinney. A real mess for Hearts in the middle. Caldwell trying to push the ball over. Eventually, hack clear. And McGinney not a million miles away. And Guemo on to Maloney, careless in the form. Craig Thompson, free kick. Referee Dougie McDonald. Shot Maloney, goes for goal, up and down, just rattles the bar. Celtic continue, hooked wide, but thumped clear by Hearts. Well, Sean Maloney scored against Hearts at Tidecastle last season, nearly the equaliser here. Thompson plays it in, can Calvez. Better goalkeeping from Arthur Boric. Got across well, ball seemed to be moving away from him. Reached out the hand. Ballo clear. And Andy Driver's in space. Andy Driver for Hearts. Boric starts. Comes for him. The ball's pushed past him. Gary Cornwell just clears off the line. Hearts continuing to press. The Celtic fans very unhappy. Simple ball over the top from the goalkeeper. Andy Driver drove in, Boric got the touch and Caldwell made the clearance. Maloney has Killen, Killen with a good hit, Ballock turns the ball away, Maloney and Suso go after it, Suso goes over, referee says play on Killen at the back post, that's where it goes! And Celtic have the equaliser 11 minutes into the second half, it's a first goal at Celtic Park, it's Celtic colours for Chris Killen. Hearts wanted a free kick for Suso going down. Maloney continued to turn the cross magnificent. The header top corner. And 23 months since he last scored for Celtic, Chris Killen makes it 1 1. McGiddy and Maloney looking lively. Inside by Aidan McGiddy goes for goal. Ballock was stranded. Well, five minutes after he side equalised, Ida McGinney almost handed them the lead. Last three matches have been drawn between these two sides. The last two, one apiece as McDonald goes in. Back off the post. Chris Killen should be, it's not. McDonald goes in, robs the goalkeeper. Thompson away. Sloppy from Hart, horrific in the end from Celtic. Good shot, back off the post. Killen simply should have buried it. It bobbled up, McDonald followed through, and Thompson off the line. Wallace for Hart. On to Michael Stewart, it's the return ball. Can be played back to him, and as Wallace takes the touch, Hinkle and Bynum, referee at a good angle, Wallace went down. Hart's wanted a penalty. Novakova sent it on, there was a touch from Hinkle, not enough, said Dougie McDonald. The referee in good position said that wasn't a spot kick. Slip from Nguemo. Novakovas on to Bui, likes to shoot from distance. Got a pretty decent shot on him, not a great goal-scoring record for Hearts. 
but came close there, flashing across. Celtic pushing again for a winner. Arm again, up against Wallace, Wallace sliding in, McGinn goes down. Corner, referee again, right up with play. Reckon there was nothing in that. Again, up against Wallace, the two collide, that might have come off Lee Wallace. And the assistant said it has. Well, Lee Wallace thought that was a goal kick. Well, if in doubt, you just thump it clear. And Wallace decided to leave it. Fox wins it, and Ballot comes for it, hearts the goal, it's unguarded, Lewins! Back across from McGinney and Glenn Lewins. Scores his first goal of the season, and almost certainly brings three points to Celtic. Ballock came, hit it back across by McGinney, and the Dutchman was up to finish. Hearts have taken it to the wire, but it's Celtic who win it. So Celtic maintain their long unbeaten SPL run at Celtic Park, uh, and Hearts haven't won away from home since February now, but for the first half there, Pat, it looked as if it might be their day. Yeah, Hearts have been getting stronger. I mean, they looked uh, pretty rough early on in the season, but uh, you see a little bit of a strength come back, a, a decent attacking play here. Suzo gets the ball, um, but Celtic haven't done bad defensively. Look, seven mm -hmm. defenders, mm -hmm. well, including the goalkeeper. He shouldn't get a shot away, but I don't know if there's enough desperation in the Celtic defenders to get in there. And quite clearly on top of that, I mean, Arthur Boch has got to do much better than that. He's down far too early, he's got two hands to it. So, but, you know, could, that's, they're, they're going to go down, but, you know, the game could have been over before half-time. Um, so, good save there by Boch, given that, but that defender's terrible. That's awful. The, the right fullback's miles out of position. Gary Caldwell's very slow to get back at it initially, but then makes the right decision to get back. But at this point, the Celtic fans were understandably furious because the, the three points could have been gone already. Yeah, we can hear them booing in the background mm -hmm. there, can't we? The, the cheers did come in the second half. They finally mm -hmm. got back in level terms. It was one of the forgotten men, Chris Killen, who got the goal. Yeah, he's had a tough time, uh, obviously, through injury originally. But, uh, you know, he's coming back. He's trying to take his chance. He's saying all the right things. That's a great save by Bala. Um, Maloney, you know, if you're going to keep on going and chasing, you know, you're not going to complain too much for your forwards if they've got the right attitude. And of course, Killen does what any good striker does. Look, he's had the shot, he's outside the 18 yard line there. Next time we see him, now, complaints that might well have been actually a, a free kick against Celtic there. I don't think it was. I think ushering the ball out is infuriating. Then we come to the penalty kicks, and I would say yes, penalty kicks both of them. That one certainly. Not a great angle that time, but I think the first one showed you that there was a touch and he didn't get the ball. Once again, watch the ball. The defender Walsh doesn't actually get the ball. He gets a little bit of the player. But like the other one, it's a very soft one, but every good argument there was a penalty kick. And this goal kick corner? Well, the referee can, can't see everything from there, but see if you're in any doubt whatsoever. And I think Walsh should have known that. You just lump it, Rose Ed, and maybe even back up the park. And uh, he must have known at that point in time that this was likely to happen. At the end of the game, Celtic put a lot of pressure on. They did put a lot of pressure at the end of the game. And all it is is Big Lovins getting up there, being the biggest, the strongest, and the one most willing to do it. And uh, can't have a good start to the season from him.